from the deep dark reaches of Star Trek Online comes Nicodus, Tabitha, and Grebog with another episode of Fleet Action Report. Welcome to Fleet Action Report, the show where we don't just play the game, but we teach you how to play the game. I am, of course, Tabitha, and over there is Grebog. This is episode 165, Non-Combat Pets. No, I did not come up with a witty name or anything like that. If you would like to support us, you can go to coffee.com slash Grebog. Uh, that is ko-fi.com slash G-R-E-B-O-G. I'm so disappointed in you, Grebog. Uh, why? What did I do this time? For not coming up with a witty name. Uh, those pets that don't fight. <laughs> I don't know. Pets that don't bite. I mean, that works. That works. Pets that don't bite. How, how has your week been? What have you been up to? Um, I've been actually playing a lot more STO than normal. Uh, very, very happily because uh, I've been working on uh, some different builds, experimenting with like because I got the Proto Star set and I've been trying like a bunch of different configurations of it. Um, I, I, I rebuilt my, um, Jurok Alliance carrier here around, around the protostar set and oh my God, it was I, I already should... a good ship, but the, uh, the, uh, pretty much I adapted the Terran Lexington build that we came up with for the previous show onto this, uh, onto this build. I'm still kind of getting all the, uh, bits and bobs for it, but. I've got it mostly put together and it's it's pretty beastly. My ship's so and small. seeing it do the barrel roll is very entertaining. Cool. I probably should go through some of my phaser builds and tweak them now that we have a, that new set. Because phasers, yeah, that, that, that new set. I think gives a lot, a lot of flavor to them. But other than that, um, I'm looking forward to starting my new job on Monday. That's going to be fun. Monday, Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. How about you? What have you been doing? Um, let's see. I. I, I, I've been busy. I, I know that. I, I've been so busy, I don't know what I've been up to. Um, <laughs> I, I still, I'm still doing WoW stuff and things. Uh, it, it's been... WoW has been mellowing, I guess would be a good way to put it. Um, yes, they did just put in some new content and, and stuff and things. I, I have not really delved too far into that. Though I did progress the story after... Um, we, we completed the, the mega dungeon, uh, last night, which, uh, let me do trigger a, a new storyline or, well, a storyline that happens after it, which was interesting. Um, but, uh, I haven't done much else of the new, new stuff. So, but, uh, yeah, I did learn that I, I was struggling to, 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 with the final boss in, in mythic on, on the in that mega dungeon on staying alive with my paladin. I, I don't, I don't know if it was me per se, my, my healer per se. There, there's a lot going on in the fight and it makes it com kind of complicated. So I, I did switch over to my DK um, to tank it instead of my paladin. And my, my death knight just can self heal so much. It, it was silly. Everyone died, but me for a good duration of the fight i ended up battle resing the healer because he, he's the only one that could keep himself alive um I, I just told him since clearly i don't need his heals to dps and, and keep himself alive <laughs> but uh, i love dks for that reason oh my god like blood dks are my fa one of my favorites but uh apparently they've added a bunch of secrets into the game and oh yeah, I've, I've been doing those with my partner. Uh, the like the secrets and the satchels. Yeah, I have not delved into that. 
I don't know if I'm going to be SOL because I, I haven't started it, um, but I am intrigued with it. So I I because I, mean, I know you, it's you, like already you, on you day can still eight. Do them. Like they're they're not going away. So like you you can you, you can just hop in and start doing them from the beginning. Cool. Um outside of, yeah, since uh, STO, I, I've been working on my KDF side, doing the dailies. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to the new stuff that's coming. That's got me hyped. Um, and what else? I, I've been playing Satisfactory still because I, I don't know what it is about factory building games. Something about do it, creating a... a Organized, optimized setup really triggers something, something in part of my brain that I, I, it, it, the chat, it's like a giant puzzle and I have to solve it. And I think that's part of it. Like, like to me, it's just a giant puzzle. Um, yeah. But, um, I've been yeah uh I I get a little bit of that with uh Palea as well it's a it being like a farming sim and just kind of just kind of uh like not fighting not doing combat stuff just kind of building and organizing and just vibing with your vibing with your construction yeah um, you, you can with mods and whatnot, go get into basically a fully creative mode. Um, you, you don't have to, like, there are mo the, these, I don't know if I really want to call they're creatures. There are aggressive creatures in the world. There are also some non-aggressive ones. So, you, you know, you, you can, once you start your game, you can go in and turn off their aggressive nature and they will just run around and not bother you. But then you can also, with mods for the game, you can then turn on, uh, basically, it doesn't cost you anything to build if you want. But I, I kind of like the challenge of making sure I, I've done the re gotten the resources, yada, yada. Um, I mean, it adds to the puzzle. Yeah, um, absolutely. Out, out, so I've been tinkering with trains, which I've showed you my, my train setup. Oh, yeah. Part of it. I have, I, I have rails running all across the map. And, uh, the, I guess not, not technically, I, I, only about halfway across the map. The map's huge. They, they over, the, the creators overdid it with, with making the map. Anyway, we're, we're not a satisfactory podcast. Um, <laughs> I, I guess let's get into, uh, this week in STO. Uh, so I'll start the, with Galaxy Goes to Red Alert. If you, if you didn't notice, um, we, we have Red Alerts again. This is, uh, uh, as normal, a filler. You have, you, you need to get 10 pr completions to get your reward. You, you only have until the 14th, which is seven days from now, which means you no longer have enough time to com complete. You can buy out, though missing this one, to me, is not as big of a deal compared to missing some of the other events. Um, though, if you do complete this, you will get a, an experimental ship upgrade token, which is especially handy right now with the new changes coming. Um, and you'll get an ultimate tech upgrade and one specialization point. Um, but yeah, it, it's for those of you stockpiling experimental ship upgrades, you're going to get to use them here soon. All right. T6X2. Bonus Marks event, August 31st to September 14th. So it's ongoing currently uh, for another week. Uh, we, um, earn 50% more, uh, a.k.a. 1.5x marks from anything that awards marks. Um, not, well, not, not anything. Uh, you don't get bonus marks from, like, your recruit, uh, recruit recruitment awards boxes and stuff like that, but... Like any in-game activity that awards marks, you'll get the 50% um, more bonus. And they announced, um, what, Saturday? It was out of the blue. Um, three new Starship bridges 
who who to thunk uh, <laughs> that we're getting three new starship bridges added to the game. Um, one's the Miranda Bridge. Uh, so for those that like to fly around in the Miranda class ships, uh, then we're getting a Yorktown Bridge for the for the various Odyssey and the Odyssey family ships, and then the Katinga Bridge for for all the D sevens and Katinga family ships. I'm I'm happy to see that they're adding bridges because they at one point said no, we're not doing bridges anymore. But now they are. So I'd like to note though, not I mean I'm happy we're getting bridges, but but Rhymeland Bridge, um, Dominion Bridge. I think if you look at the three Miranda Yorktown Katinga. They picked the three most popular ships. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Like I'm not. I'm I, like I'm not expressing any form of disappointment. I'm very, very happy that we're getting these bridges. And that we're getting bridges at all. I I think this is to this is hopefully is to gauge reaction of the player base and if maybe the player base is super excited, which I am, to see new bridges come in, that they may then expand out and every so often we might see new bridges pop in which will be nice yes absolutely and like i'd love to see like uh well that's like pie in the sky like customizable bridges and stuff but like yeah new bridges hell yeah they they they've been talked to yeah they've been that's been a common question uh, of a customizable bridges in <laughs> many 10 Fords and they're like, uh, we'd have to like recode a lot to be able to get that done. And it's just at this time, not, not going to happen. Yeah. But hooray new bridges. All right. Next Star item. Trek online incursion. The 30th season of Star Trek online will launch September 12th, just five days from now. 2023 new features uh new episode taken by surprise new tfos two of them resistance of star pace one and guillotine uh t6 uh t6 ship upgrade you can go from t6x to t6x2 which unlocks one more starship trait slot one more universal console slot and one more device slot to do the upgrade you, need, you use the same experimental Starship upgrade tokens. It just uh, it costs um, two upgrade tokens to upgrade from T6X to X2. Yes. So in total to go from a, a T6 non-upgraded ship to T6X2 will take three tokens total. One to get to the X, one to, and two to get to X2. Every time I hear T six X two, and this is one of my main like, they need to just call it T seven, because I keep thinking of X Men X two whenever they sh they say the X two upgrade, and like X two was a terrible movie. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I, I there have been a lot of people calling it the T seven upgrade, but uh, they have not. T7 upgrade, it's simpler, it's cleaner, it's it is it's actually really what it is, and like it's easier to say than T6X2. I mean, it's not probably far off from what we would get when we uh, like from the T5 to T6, the changes in the ships. I, I I don't think we would now be too far off from the T6 to the T6X2 on what would technically be T7. Um, though I am glad that they are giving us a way to, uh, you know, upgrade to that point versus what they did in the past. Yeah, don't yeah, don't make us buy new ships to do T seven. No, don't do that. I would do anything for Stowe, but I won't do that. All right, and as part of the incursion, that we are kicking off the 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 whole thing with a a new event. Borg Tesseract. This starts September twelfth. Uh, okay, I, I guess I am guessing on the dates. This is supposed to kick off the thing. 
They're dropping everything on the 12th. So I am assuming this too is starting on the 12th. And because you get need 20 days of completions, that's typically a month long event, which means October 10th is a month later. So that is my guess on the duration of the event. It could be wrong, but they did not specify clearly in their blog post other than 20 completions needed to get the reward. Now to get your completions, you need to do one of four options. There's two missions, uh, wish upon a star, which is already in game. And then the new mission, which is taken by surprise, or you can do either of the two new TFOs, which as stated by Tabby earlier is guillotine and resistance of Starbase one. Now I'm um, thinking, uh, now we already know that resistance of Starbase one is, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a space TFO. I'm wondering if guillotine is going to be a new ground TFO. I can't remember what I read, but I, I, I think I was under the impression it was another space, but I could be mistaken. I, I'm not going to be sad if they're both space, honestly. I don't want to fight Borg on the ground in, the t in, an, in another TFO. Although, honestly, we could use a good Borg TFO because all of our current Borg TFOs are not great. All of our current ground-based Borg TFOs yeah. are so dated. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant to say. All of our current ground Borg TFOs are not great. Um, every time I see read the resistance of Starbase One, it it makes me think something else, like it's going to transform and we're fighting it, or it's resisting us. <laughs> Ooh, I, I I I'm sure that's just my 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 odd brain taking the resistance of Starbase One differently than what. <laughs> Anyway, so the reward will be a three-piece adaptation ground set. This will be the Infinity Modulator Rifle, which has, came from a, a game, uh, for those that uh, didn't know that. Elite uh, Force. Yes. And then the Adaptation Personal Shield um, and the Universal Kit Module Adaptation vin Vincul... Whatever. Uh, vinculum? Vinculum. Vinculum. Um... The interesting thing I noticed about the, the, the set, well, one, the shield, the personal shield is the way it was just written up. It talks about the, as you take damage, it starts adapting and re adding resistances to you, to your shield. So you t then start taking less and less and less, less damage from getting hit. Um, I'm curious on how fast and how much it stacks up and how it's going to compare to current meta shields because this could become the new meta shield. All right, so the two-piece set, uh, 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 when you have two of them equipped, whenever you defeat an enemy with a secondary attack, it grants you a bonus to uh, energy damage for 60 seconds, and that can stack. It didn't say how high, but. And then three piece, you get a new ability, modulated energy blast. Whenever you trigger the two piece proc, you get a charge. Then you can use the modulated energy blast. That'll consume the, all the charges. The more charges, the bigger the blast. Um, didn't specify how many is the max charge, but in past it's five something similar and then also doing the event um you'll get to claim a free starfleet protostar uniform during during this i don't know if uh it's just going to be in the store that we can claim or if it's going to be in the first reward box from doing the first daily it, they they have done it both ways in the past so it, it could be either or keep your eyes peeled on the zen store promotion tab that's kind of a cool looking rifle though. Yeah. Um, and, and from my understanding it, it's exactly the way it was in the game. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad I knew they had talked about, it hasn't been a year yet, 
But they had said, we have gotten the okay, the permission to use other Star Trek content other from other games and be able to pull it into Star Trek Online. And this is one of the first things we're starting to see of that. So th that is, to me, very, very cool. I want to see the... Um... I want to see some of the Starfleet command ships get pulled in. Because those were some nice looking ships from the original Starfleet command games. Yeah. Um, they talked about that's They're going to start pulling in some of that stuff. Um, I have, and I should share with you. I have some books that uh, basically has every... If it's been in a game, TV show, or movie, it has the basics about the ship. And when they, they've been pulling some of those ships out of, the, like, basically, I'm like, I feel like STO devs ha have this, this book, too, and are like, okay, go to page this. This is the next ship. <laughs> because, uh, what, the Norway was one of the ships in the book. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting looking ship. And then it came into the game. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, yeah. The, the... But, uh... Yeah, because, uh, yeah, there, yeah, there's more ships from Star Trek Armada that could be pulled into the game. There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, yeah. Th there's so much Star Trek content out there. Which is a good thing. All right. So on, much Star Trek. Uh, on to, we, we, for, for those that don't know, Tabby and I are ramblers, and we could probably ramble on about just whatever in Star Trek. Um, Especially without a Nicodus. Yeah, to keep us on track. So um, <laughs> apparently that's my job tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's get to the primary target. So we decided we're going to talk about non-combat pets. And the reason being is there's so many of them. Yes, they, they, they affect nothing about the combat of the game. They're here for the looks. They, they are here for fun. And many people Pets like to combat. collect them. I'm sorry, what was that? So hence the word, hence the title, non-combat pets. Yeah. Apparently, Hellhound Psycho, Psycho likes our ramble. <laughs> I mean, Hellhound Psycho, how's it going? We, we could ramble all night. Um, so I broke this into non-combat pets with space and, and ground. We're gonna start with the space. Um, there are here. There's some that you can buy from the Lobby store, which they are roughly twenty. Lobby a pop. Let's see. Can I pull up the Lobby store without? I can't, I bet. Uh, yes. Use the event campaign to get to the store menu. All right. Vanity pets is, I believe, where they're all. Yep. So if you look in here, they're all 30, 20. I think the older ones are 20. The newer ones are, are 30. But there's all kinds of, like, non-combat pets, space pets, ground, well, pets. They're all in here. Um, some of these are new ways to get old pets that you couldn't get. You, you, they changed how you could get them, so you can't get them anymore the normal way. So they put them into the lobby store so you can get them now that way. Because I'm pretty sure the Salat hub was given out a long time ago another way I, I see a few things in here that were uh, put in here that, that were given out in other methods but uh, so yeah like you have uh, apparently you can't you can't sort this list into uh, space and ground on the Lobby store. But, uh, you know, in here there's like the Aeon Shuttle, Captain's Yacht Shuttle, the new Runabout, Bringing the Far Shuttle, 
mirror universe fighter, um, which is essentially the mirror Delta flyer. And, and then there's a Tholian Wid widow fighter. Um, there's probably a few more of them in here. Um, than what that, or, uh, po what, what, what I pulled up, or maybe these are, there's just a lot of ground in here. Like, Oh, here's a Voth heavy fighter. Um, there's the captain's yacht, mirror universe. Oh, it does look like they might have them in a sorted list in a way. Looks like the space ones are 20, the, the ground ones might be 30. If, if what I'm noticing is accurate. Um, like there's even a Nadarian um, far point in here. So if you want to have one of the far point Nadarian companions, you can have it follow you around. Then there's also some in the Zen store. And in here you have to go, I think it's person personnel technically. No, that's the, let's see, that's combat. Oh yeah, here. It, 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 runabout companion. Th this is a non-combat non pet. 300. I'm not sure I would ever pay 300 Zen for it, but I mean, it is if you if well, you, you can really also want get it. it from uh, Reputation too. I, yes. Um some of them come from packs like their the class F shuttle is in the TOS bundle pack. Let's see. I can find the, uh, there's too many bundles, but there, there's some that are, are, are in packs. Some of them are in, but the, the yeah, like there's the, also the Delta class shuttle, Delta flyer. Um, that is also in the 500 Zen, I believe also in the personnel. Like here's also the type eight shuttle for, for you KDF. You get a type 10 shuttle from the, uh, yeah, from the DS9 bundle pack. Yep. Um, the Delta class shuttle um delta flyer also can be picked up in the for consoles apparently they have two bundles one's a federation pack which is four thousand zen and then there's an all faction mega bundle that's eight thousand zen that has the shuttle um okay this might be the only one that i, I would ever spend lobby or not Lobi, with zen on the geckley companion Who doesn't want a pet Geckly following around? Eh. <laughs> um, but yeah, like Klingon Empire Toron Toron Shuttle. Um, that that's three hundred Zen. Stalker Stealth Fighter five hundred Zen. I'm curious on why some of them cost more than others. Yeah, I'm cur I'm cur also curious as to why. Um, why they cost so many Zen for a non-combat pet. It, it, yeah. Um, the Type 8 Shuttlecraft Phoenix Prize Pack or 300 Zen. <laughs> um, the Type 10, as you said, the DS9 bundle. Um, yeah. Yellowstone Runabout. There, there's, a, it's bundled with the Yellowstone class Runabout. Um, some of these you can also find on the exchange. And then, of course, there's some that they've given out to us from events, like I have right here. If I can get it centered on the screen. The uh, Crystalline Shard, which is from a past event where we were fighting the, gee, the Crystalline, you know, Shard. The whole, yeah, we were fighting the Shards. Um, there also is, let me see if I, from one of the, uh, a 
Okay, it's not gonna work. Oh, there it is. It, they're both out. Okay. And then there's also the Phoenix shuttle, which is basically you get a small Phoenix, uh, you know, Zephyrin Cochran shuttle. I don't know that that's to scale. I think it would be smaller. Um, I, I say that because of the size of it compared to my uh, constitution class is a bit. Uh, yeah, that's a bit large. Yeah. Because when you when you when you uh, like the cockpit, it's supposed to be about three meters, and like it's supposed to have three people in that cockpit. Yeah, yeah. And, and based off of big. windows on my ship, and, and the size of that cockpit, <laughs> something's not right. But th that is a lot of the the space pets ground there are way way so more. many i'm going to beam down to academy because i i can then pull out some of the my ground pets and i've got a lot of them pulled up in my browser window too but uh do you want me to go through all this or do you want me to well, you go ahead and go through them so I can pull them up on the screen. So, Epos. Epos are, are, are th you know, there are all kinds of Epos, and they're everywhere. Um, and when I say they're everywhere, they, they're part of an event. They are, um, I think I have it. They're part of Q's Winter Wonderland. Um, they're, they're pretty much uh, new. There's like so much on New Romulus. The like a bunch of missions that like uh, revolve around Epos, like Epo training, Epo collecting, Epo. Uh, there's there's probably like an Epo feast somewhere that like they they just don't talk about. Yeah. Um, there are like a bunch of Epos that you get from Hughes went to Wonderland. And then there are, are only four basic species from New Romulus. Um, typically, what you do is you collect tags. And there is the Epo fields. And that is where you go to collect the ta tabs or tags. My brain. I don't think I have any of those epos. I, I have a lot of the special ones. I got a rainbow. But uh Yeah. You you collect tags, then there's going to be a duty officer mission that you pick up and, and do that will turn the tag well, I think you might turn do an actual mission like like a repeatable that you can turn in the tags into and they'll get you start a duty officer mission to get your your first epo and, and then you raise the epo doing go you know going back and doing a little more do more duty officer missions and you'll raise it all the way up to elder and then uh once it's uh an elder it well i think it technically con is considered a, a non-combat pet but way before it even hits elder my rainbow looks like okay that's an elder i thought i had some that were not elder but uh there are these the epos are these cute little furry critters that uh are part of new romulus you you'll also see them here, there, running around. Um, and then also you get them from the Winter Wonderland. This, the rainbow one is from that. There's also like Gumdrop and uh, Sugar Plum and, you know, Peppo Mint. <laughs> you know, because Q. <laughs> oh, my. Um, the thing to note is in the Epo Fields, you can then turn in raised epos for romulan marks and depending upon the rarity depends on how many marks 
Now, at first, they didn't take the Q's Winter Wonderland, but I think they've added it in, and now you can. And, and then again, once de depending upon rarity, depends on how many marks you get from them. Um, for, for a more common one, it's 100. For the rarest of them, it's 400. Um, some of the things that trigger an even more rare Epo is the how good, uh, like if you crit on your duty officer mission. But uh, yeah, uh, outside, let's see. But there are all kinds of many, like there are a lot. <laughs> and when I say a lot, there are a lot of uh, non-combat pets that are associated with the events. Um, th though there is one special one that you can't get well, unless you are a lifetime sub. And that's the Mugato Companion. And I have... I'm here. Um, I used to be able to just go to DS9 to claim him. I don't know, or her, I guess. Um, I don't know which, if that's still the case, I would assume yes. Yeah, this is the, uh, yeah, uh, this is the Mugato, not the, Gum the Gumato, because there's, there's two different ones. There's the Gumato, which looks like this, but I assume it's kind of a red color. Yeah, uh, the, let's see, the Gumato come is, is the red variant of what I've got. It comes from, oh, apparently sign up for Raptor, link to Facebook, blah, blah, blah. It's an old, uh, it's an older way of, yeah, I don't know that Raptor st and Facebook linking account and your Star Trek, I don't know that you can do all that. So... Probably one of the ones you can't get anymore. The I know the Mugato is 800 day veteran reward, or or for those that are lifetime subs. Um, and then oh, always in game, you know there there are various Mugatos that you have to fight. Um, another some of the event ones are the like the micro. Micro miniaturized Alachi Walker. And then we have things uh, like Tabby had out one of the uh, the one from uh, the Halloween event not too long ago. Yeah, this is the wa Walker that I have on screen. I couldn't find a picture of it, but I actually have one. Um, and the Zen Star, the, uh, we, like I said, the Salat Cub was in there. There's also the Tark and an Exocomp. Um, those are all, what, I believe 300 Zen. And as I also showed you, like when I had the Lobby store up, there were all kinds of non-combat pets in there for 30 low buy. Um, yeah. Big old pets, cats. There's nine different breeds of cats in there. There, there's Alachi Skitter. Um, there, there's apparently some spiders in there. If you like spiders, um, alpha one, one, seven K nine. Yeah. Alpha. Yeah. Uh, there are tons of tons of tons of pets. Um, the, why, would the, you wanna, why would you want to do the spiders though? Uh, ew. I mean, some people like them. Ew. Except to me, the first, the, like the 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 one spider, the first spider that you showed looked to me more like a tick than a spider. But you know, beagles, of course. Yeah. Um, there yeah, was a like giveaway. A we got a free beagle, um, aka Porthos, and then they also. Gave us um, later a Rottweiler named Porthos and a another. Let's see. Uh, 
I was like, the Rottweiler, they still might be part of the whole um, Lobie setup. I, I know you can get Beagle Pups, and there's Rottweilers in there, too. Um, though they may not be named Orthos. I don't know. That's why you pay attention to special like giveaways. They they sometimes give us some of these pets. Um, that is how I got a tabby cat, and I don't mean t tabby who's on stream with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I got the orange tabby for, from from a, an event giveaway. Well, it's nice to know that there's so many variations of me in the game. Um, they, they recently gave us a Tholian, um, in, in a part of the, one of the giveaways, which, which yeah, uh, I think a lot of the giveaways that are, are from like, uh, the Lobie pets. Now, for, for the Lol Not Summer event, they, there are many, 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 many kinds of pets. There are three feather monkeys. There are six different tropical birds, and then you got the, uh, Oregon. Um, oh, I don't know why, is that really a non-combat pet? I know it's listed. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, apparently you set it in front of you. Um, yeah, using this device will place an immobile Horgon at your feet. It will be removed if you leave the vicinity. To me, that's not really a combat, uh, uh, a pet. But uh, I Gary, think that's why I question. Like, going, is it really a pet? It's it's I mean, more it's of a. Technically, it's classified as a non-combat pet, but it, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as you can see in my inventory, I have a bunch of uh, Rhizian tropical birds. Uh. Like there is one of them. Uh, this is the tufted sunset streamer. Some of them are quite pretty. Does it use Twitch or YouTube though? Uh, I, it's probably dependent upon uh, which way it decides to go. But uh, the, these will fly around and follow you. Um, they 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 do land. I kind of always wanted them to like you to stick out your arm and they could land on your arm, but I don't think they will ever do that. Um, but yeah, there are all kinds of colors. Ooh, here's a, like, here's one of the pre uh, with blue. I, I love, uh, uh, and these are all from, oh, I guess I got two of those. I do. Oh, technically, I have three. Um, you can, I think, turn them in for walnut favors uh, once they get to adult. Uh, feather monkeys. Or you can I just only keep them and have pretty birds. Or, or you can just keep them and have pretty birds. I only have one of the monkeys. Um, but but you can at least get the general idea uh, on the shape, size. And oh, look, oops. But yeah, that that is pretty much that. That's from the Walnut Festival Summer Event. Hughes Winter Wonderland. Oh, there are so many. There are so many pets. A lot of them you can buy with the ornament stuff. There are though um, a bunch of Epos as well. There are eight breeds in the Epo of. of different epos um I, I showed some of them like uh i i like the, i think the rainbow is probably my favorite there's an abominable snowman which uh, which kind of resembles the mogato yes um there are so to get some of these some of them you buy from the, the event store which, which Epos you get when you're doing the event, you get tags. Then you go to the Epo trainer there in the center where Q is 
standing there is a person there that they will take the tags and you'll start doing duty officer missions to get your EPO and also training up your EPO. Um, then there are to get the gingerbread. I've gotten all mine from doing the uh, TFO, the ground TFO that you run around in the gingerbread village. That is how I've gotten all of mine. Um, that includes the Andorian gingerbread. Um, why it? He doesn't look very Andorian. I don't understand. I I, I don't understand. The oh right my one? god! You know what I just realized? The Snowconian looks like an Iconian. That that's the point. I know, like it never clicked before now. Cause I'm like looking at the picture of it. It's got the six eyes. It's got the little um, uh, head crest thing. But like, I also have. Okay, the gingerbread Klingon looks the same as. I'm struggling here. Okay, all my gingerbread people look the same. They're labeled different, but they're all like the icons, like the little icons that show them as being different. And I was hoping that my gingerbread Andorian was blue. Uh, that, that is definitely not blue. <laughs> I was hoping the Vulcan ha had the pointy ears like the icon shows, but, but no. It's very disappointing. Maybe it's a, a feature. Maybe they, they accidentally, because it's clearly loading the same thing. Every time I've clicked it, it's loaded the same one, essentially. Um, but yeah, those, I, all the different of one of those I was getting from the TFO. I also got the tortured elf from that. So, uh, I think you can buy some of them. They, they're drops and some of them you can buy. And just doing the event, sometimes you'll get some. Um, why did he? Maybe it's because it's not the event time. Maybe. Because every time I summon the, uh, the uh, tortured elf, it just bounces a hat that just bounces around. And then fades out. But yeah, there's like a Crampiri. There's a, yeah, the Snowconian. There's Snowman. Yeah, even the Snowman behaves differently outside of the Winter Wonderland event. So, so it may be just that the, the, the the other, the gingerbreads just look like standard gingerbread men outside of the event. Now, there are some other um, special acquisition uh, non-combat. Uh, there's the Game of Task Force Tier 5 rep. Uh, once you get there, you can get a miniaturized Danub runabout. And then uh, there's a Dot 7 non-combat drone. That was from a past event. And then there's the Tardigrade Companion. And then, uh, let's see here. The Tardigrade. I'm trying to remember how you get those. There's I know there's a couple of them. Yeah, there, there's a few. My brain is... Because I have one, but that doesn't... So... Age of Discovery starter pack. Um, that that's how you get the standard tardigrade companion. The let's see, RD one. Age of Discovery starter pack reclaim. Oh, and then a lot of the other tardigrades. It looks like the special named ones come from Lobby stores. Thirty, thirty Lobby to get. 
Any, anyone have questions about non-combat pets? Yep, here's my tardigrade. Now, now, the thing to note about these tardigrades is I believe these only stay here. Well, no, this one doesn't do it. There is one that it, it's a non-combat tardigrade, but it, it basically, after a certain amount of time, it just goes away. But, uh... I think initially when they put these in, they made loud noises when they ran around and followed you. And so they, they didn't have the sound adjusted right. Think, uh, I guess for those that play WoW, think about the uh, hunters taming dinosaurs and, and how the dinosaurs would stomp around and, and be super loud. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think that was also a problem initially with the tardigrades. The devil sore. Yeah. Well, we we talked uh, all all night long about non combat pets. We did. Um, to change things up. Oh, did Nicodus tell he 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 had something that he wanted to show idea, or was. I don't, I, hmm. I can't remember what he, he, he had an idea for a show. And I don't know if he was wanting to do it next week or not. Well, then we'll hold off on announcing anything for next week. But here, do you, do you need the daily? Sure, why not? Let, let's give him a, a, a something to, to wake them up before we, we, Go off and do something else. <laughs> I want to show off my nearly complete um, awesome Jirok build. My Jirok Prodigy build. And I'll fly my constitution because that's that's what I do on this guy. Wee you. Wee you. Space spiders. Though, though, if you have, if anyone ever has an idea for a show topic, questions about the game, um, that you would lo like more information about, let us know. Now, we may not initially know, but we will definitely dig into it and, and come back with, with answers. I don't remember my, 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 my beams looking like this. Did... Some of my beams are, uh, definitely look different than I remember them. I don't know what to think about that, you know. All right, we have two people in chat, it says, or two viewers. Uh, we have a goofball lurking. Um, goofball! We're always happy to see a goofball, even if he's just lurking. Yes. Do do we want to raid people or just call it? Oh, let's go ahead and call it. Okay. Well then, uh, thank you all for for hearing us uh, 
uh, coming out and listening to the non-combat, which is probably one of the, I don't know if I would say, for some people it would be interesting, other people maybe not. Because it has no effect on gameplay other than what's following you around. But pets are cute. I, that is why I thought with you I we, we should cover them. Because there are so many, and many people don't know where a lot of them come from. Like, if you didn't know to go to New Romulus, to the Epo Field, you wouldn't know that you can get non-combat pets from there. Because yeah, I honestly forget about it a lot. <laughs> All right, next week we we will we'll, we'll probably have to announce it on, on Monday, on what we are planning to do. Um, yeah, so uh, join us Monday for our fleet fun night where we will uh, just uh, informally blow stuff up and murder some pixels. And, and as always, you can follow us. Or support us at uh, coffee.com slash Greebug. There's now a link in stream chat. Uh, so ko-fi.com slash G-R-E-B-O-G. That is where we are putting all, uh, you know, taking support. Uh, if you'd like to do subs and whatnot, that is where you go to do it. And uh, we get a bigger percentage of the money that way than what through which the way they do it. Um, you could also just do a one-time thing if you want. Uh that either way is fine. We do have plans to start creating some uh, sub content only, uh, meaning like there will be some special content for those that sub. So that way you, you can you get a benefit to, to subscribing to us. But uh, yeah. All right, everybody, uh, as we head out of here, y'all have fun, be safe, and don't set yourselves on fire. Live long and prosper, everybody, and we will see you Monday. <laughs>